Hey everyone, welcome back to another Caleb's Critique Corner, and today we are going to be heading down to Great League. I'm very curious to see how many potential card beings we run into, but today's battles will feature um, battles in Great League from Youngster Brian. I believe Youngster Brian did prepare for card being, so let's see how the team plays out. Before we get into the battles, a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you would also like to have early access to my strategies and lineups or see behind the scenes footage of my battles, feel free to sign up in the Patreon link down below. All right, looking at this team, uh, it's got a Sableye, Registeel, and Alolan Sandslash. So uh, two very strong checks to Carbink, obviously one weak to Carbink, but I think that's pretty fine. Uh, double Steel, very, very strong in Great League in general. And yeah, it's going to be pretty good in this one too, I think. All right, going to lead, fantastic lead, actually for Youngster Brian. And then comes in uh, Noctowl. I like this counter swap. Yeah, Alolan Sandslash can also beat Noctowl, but the Shadow Ball starts hurting. Whereas this, you just throw one Zap Cannon, farm down, lock on down and uh, come away with a lot of energy. Um, throws it and then now debuffed as well. Fantastic. Um, yeah, this is looking really good so far. Uh, things like a potentially core break in the back ends. It's not too many, to be honest. Um, yeah, carving even shields up is not that great into a lone sand slash. Uh, all right, let's see what's gonna be. The opponent actually throws a move here. Um, I actually think that's kind of a misplay from the opponent side and ends up being a Charizard. All right, this is fantastic for um, Youngster Brian. And now we have the Ice Punch coming through, uh, doing a lot of damage. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely in a good spot. Uh, this one's definitely over. Yeah, well played, well played. Um, I think the most important thing is when you have a good matchup, you still want to maintain your advantage all the way throughout. And I think Youngster Brian did a great job of that. Um, there's plenty of times where people still win when they have a good matchup, but they still might not be playing super clean. You want to make sure anytime you have advantage, you keep extending that advantage to the point where they can't really do anything to come back from it. Oh my gosh. All right. Whole team's really good into this. Oh, another safe swap knocked out. All right. Um, we know how this goes. Uh, even if they shield, you're probably okay even not even winning switch. Um, one thing I would do if I was Youngster Brian, just throw the Zapkin a little sooner. Um, you know, if you get the attack drop, the main thing is the wing, uh, the wing attack damage is also going to reduce a little bit. It's not a huge deal, but it could make a difference in the end. Um, so yeah, so this should be just a sky attack. Oh no, they got another Shadow Ball. Yeah, so again, maybe the debuffed damage might play a role. Typically speaking, you should be able to... That's weird. You should be able to Shadow Call down there. Uh, or sorry, lock on down. Very uh, weird situation. All right, we get uh, Frost Last coming in. Uh, and that's not going to be a great time. Um, this team is just super weak to save wide though. Uh, ABA weak to save wide. So um, I think still in a pretty good spot. Um, yeah. Uh, Avalanche just going to get shielded. I think it's the right call. You can probably go straight return into this Medicham. It was Medicham, right? I, I don't know. I was caught up in the moment. Yeah, Medicham. Yeah. Uh, this is fine too. Um, throw the drill run. I personally would just throw the energy, but it's fine. You win the CMP. The only tricky part here is in case the game glitches and you can't get the move off. <laughs> um, I don't think you were in ice. Uh, you know, so Brian was in ice punch range anyway so it doesn't really matter too much all right so pretty solid um again i would just throw that zap cannon right off the bat i don't know if that's why you weren't able to win the zero shield scenario usually speaking unless maybe it's a slow counter swap but i'm pretty sure the swap was pretty great oh my gosh these leads are killing it all right um it was actually under level match jam too um yeah this is kind of a weird situation but i think what you want to do is shield up and then pivot out I think that's the play. You don't want to really gonna get hit by an earthquake. Uh, ends up being baited by the rock side. This gets a little weird because I'm pretty sure they get to the earthquake. Yeah, they do. So yeah, you go down shields. Um, I like. I would probably okay. So right here, I would probably over farm. Over farm till maybe get to like double ice punch before they get to the earthquake. Because, um, so maybe get to double ice punch and throw the first one at six. Uh, at six mud shots so that you could throw the second one at seven mud shots and force him force the cmp okay i guess they still end up shielding anyway yeah so they're going to double shield okay so they still get to the earthquake oh uh, this is not terrible it just depends on what they have in the back end i think you probably still come in with um save y okay two three four five 
Uh, ends up being just a rocks. No, it ends up being an earthquake. Okay. This is, yeah, this is a little tricky. I think I would just come in Sableye. So the reason why I come in Sableye is because I don't think that Galarian Stumpfist gets to that earthquake if you come in Sableye, which means you get hit by a rock slide, which again, without the alignment, it is still kind of tough. Um, yeah, because you just have no way of taking out this Noctowl without throwing energy. And typically speaking, Thunder Charge is actually pretty solid here. But yeah, I mean, it's just, you still get hit by another move, right? Yeah, a little late. Um, I think uh, the biggest issue here is how to address Glare and Stumpfist safe swap. I think overall, you probably just stay in the lead and you pivot out later, right? Try to take it out. Obviously, getting baited on the rock side is not great, but you're down a shield already. And unfortunately, the alone sand slash just cannot tank a single rock side or single earthquake. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the bigger issues. Um, zoom real, trying to catch. Okay, big catch. I like the play. Um, yeah, absorb a lot of that energy. Typically speaking, as you know, maybe this one is running Hydro Pump. All right, they come in glaring stuff. This is fantastic. Yeah, typically speaking, alone sand is not too bad into Zoom Roll as long as they don't have Hydro Pump or you have shields for it. All right, um, they go for the Earthquake. Looks like a CMP, which is a little unfortunate. I would probably undercharge this just in case you no shield. Uh, okay, that's fine though. Oh, Swamper. Okay. Interesting catch. Probably would just throw. I like the return in case they try to go for the catch, right? I like that that play. They end up shielding. Uh, okay. You still have the Reggie Seal. Um. Hopefully it's not a Hydro Pump. Okay, play rough. That's good. Go over him a little bit. Ooh, maybe a little too much. I think you still get to the move though. Oh wait, they went Ice Beam. Oh, they saved. Okay. I actually like this play a lot. I probably would over farm. Here's why. So, if you look at the health on this Lone Sand Slash, so much health. You resist Ice Beam and Play Rough, just farm to Infinity, right? Farm to 100 NG, farm a lot of energy. You need the extra NG for the Swamper because it's going to outpace. Um, I guess, technically speaking, the draw one shouldn't KO the Azumarill anyway, but I just over farm, right? You don't, you don't need to worry about the Azumarill with energy. All right, but let's see how this goes. Uh, shouldn't, shouldn't knock out. Maybe farm down here. Yeah, that's fine. You probably, again, you probably could farm a little bit more, right? Because the Hydro Cannon is still going to be the thing you shield. Yeah, you just gotta go draw run. It's a little tricky, dicey. I think if the Swamper player is playing correctly, they're just going to double, double up. I don't know if they doubled up, though. They might have not doubled up. Maybe they lost track accounts. Nice. Okay, so still getting the win. Uh, but again, I think in that situation, you just uh, leave with more energy because uh, the Hydra Can is going one-shot you, right? That's the most one of the more important things in a lot of PvP scenarios is anytime that you know that a move is not going to KO you and the move in the back or some other move is going to one-shot you anyway... There's no point in preserving any health, right? Um, like, for instance, if you run Sabai into a Dunsparce and there's a Ready Seal in the back, right? You have one shield remaining. You don't shield the Dunsparce, right? Because you know the Zapkin is going to pretty much take you out at a certain health range anyway. All right, that's just one example. Uh, Talonflame. I don't see this very often. But, uh, yeah, I think it was pretty good timing. Right, yeah, you just have to stay in. It's very awkward. I just flame charge one two three okay they're on two maybe one two three four four is probably okay as well you give up one free turn on that okay nice okay so in this scenario i'd probably come in alone sand slash Main reason being, Bastion beats alone Sand Slash in zero shields, but most importantly, they have a shield advantage, right? Um, you're in a good spot, but Sceptile has Earthquake. I think you come in alone Sand Slash because Registeel does not need the shield. If that Bastion stays in and tries to take out the lone Sand Slash with the Earthquake, that's okay. Or, or sorry, with the Flamethrower, because you still get to a draw run before that happens, right? So you still chip it quite a bit. This is where it gets a little scary because the Bastion still has a shield, right? And Bastion with the shield up here looks very, very strong against the backline. Um, 
I like this play a lot, though. I like that play a lot. You need to build yourself a vantage somehow, energy lead. And that was actually huge. Um, go straight for another draw run. Okay. Not a bad play. I think you get to... They can't smack you down, right? Oh, barely. All right. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Yeah, because you have the energy. Don't want to give the Bastion too much harm. Yeah. So, even though maybe better to swap in the Lone Sand Slash at that point, a really good adjustment, right? To uh, find a wing top there. Nice. Okay, 4-1. Not too bad. Um, I think the only team lost to was a Galarian Sunfist safe swap. Uh, but overall, gameplay looks pretty good. Timings, for the most part, look pretty optimized. I mean, this is obviously sped up, so I might be missing a few things here or there. Uh, you're also using one turn, two turn moves, and a lot of other people are too. Oh, okay. Whoa, that looked like it was like lag. How did they get to the foul play beforehand? All right, let me double check that. It looked like stuttery. Yeah, it didn't even look like the foul play was reached, but maybe just obviously it was. I'm just wondering if they lost turn two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, it just looked very stuttery. I'm surprised they even made the catch there. Um, all right. Uh, it's kind of an awkward position. I personally stay in Sableye in the mirror just to see who wins CMP. I mean, here's the most important thing. Shadow doesn't impact CMP, right? So if they weren't going to win CMP before with a non-shadow, that's fine. Because now this Sableye has a lot of energy. Yeah, you have a move too. Wait, yeah. I know. I think they just lost a turn. Because they're still... Um, Brian's still one move away. Weird. Really weird. Um, this is fine. A little over farm. A little over 100 there. But not the end of the world. Not by too much. All right. CMP is pretty big. Um, I think it was Earthquake. I probably let this go. Yeah, I like this play a lot. Just Shadow Call down if it is Earthquake. Ends up being Rock Slide. Okay. This... I think it's still a rock slide. Yeah, it's kind of weird. A little impatient from the opponent, I guess. But that helps a lot. Really good patience there. Oh, this is actually a pretty good spot to be in. Yeah, draw runs are... I mean, shields up. Like, again, this is one of those situations where, like, it doesn't matter if you have chip damage on the alone sand slash because the focus blast slash zap can is still going to one-shot you. So all that damage from that Glaring self did nothing, right, for the opponent. Uh, No shield on the focus blast? I like that play a lot, actually. Because now you take out the save Y... Can they lock on? The real question, can they lock on you down before you get the foul play? And it looks like, no, not quite. Really well played. I like that. Um, I don't know about the swap right off the bat. Um, maybe Brian knows they're running like a super high rank Sableye, so they know they're going to lose CMP every time. Uh, also did lose the turn though, so maybe that wasn't a bad, a bad play. Um, but yeah, that mid to end game, perfection. Really well played. Yeah, the loss on the Shadow Call was really bizarre. Um, all right. Uh, not a great lead, but you win the zero shield, so you can force a shield from your opponent. Oh, this is actually nice because you land it. Yeah, if you have a high enough ranked Registeel, ha they have to go Earthquake next. They can't go Rockside. Oh, going for the Zap Cannon. Okay. Looks like the opponent's trying to... I mean, yeah, it looks like they're trying to farm down, so I guess that was not a bad play at all. Yeah, you just come in Sableye... If they have double steel in the back, that's fine. They probably have some steel counter in the back, though. Yeah, I like the no shields here. They're debuffed, and there's nothing that really takes you out. Oh, okay. This is really good. Yeah. Um, Shadow Lone Sand Slash beats Lantern in the ones and twos, I believe. But you have a shield advantage. So even better. Um, I probably would shield surf. I don't know. Maybe not. Good, CM good throwing out the CMP. Nice. Yeah, it's just a little awkward. But I guess like they might bait you with the sky attack anyway. This is still pretty good positioning. Uh let's see here. Yeah. You should get to two before one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, okay, they just got to it. Uh I think this KOs you though. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'd probably shield the Surf there, mainly because Surf is going to be a little bit more damage um, than Sky Attacks, obviously. Yeah, they have to they have to land a Shadow Ball afterward if they don't throw the Surf, right? Whereas they whereas if they if they learn land the Surf, they have they could go straight Sky Attack. Yeah, that's fine though. I think overall early to mid game was good. I think just the end game decision of not shielding the Surf was really it. Everything else, I think you did everything you could. Yeah, threw on CMP as well after landing the 
thing. Oh, wait. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? So, typically speaking, so I know I said counter swap the Bastion in that one game with Alone Sand Slash. But in general, if you lose the lead, I would always say swap the Registeel because the Registeel can grab the Shield range, right? It seemed like in all the other games, that's what happened, at least against the Noctow matchups. But maybe it was a misclick in this one. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is the this is the tough part about swapping in Alone Sand Slash. You can't get a Shield advantage, right? Registeel can get a Shield advantage against Medicham. Uh, if you have high rank one, you could beat it in with Power Punch as well in Zero Shields. But if unless they have Dynamic Punch, um, you should be able to beat it in Zero Shields against most combinations of Medicham's move sets. Um, all right, come in Registeel. Okay, they stay in. You don't really want to shield this, but you never know what they have in the back, right? They clearly don't have like, something great. Like at this point, it might be worth shielding if they have like a Shadow Victory Bell or something. Oh, they have a Sableye. Okay, that makes sense. But then shield. Like at a certain point, you kind of consider shielding because they don't have a great check to Reg Seal if they are throwing that move, right? I think this is still kind of okay. I think they get to the foul play before you do. Oh, nice. Ah, the catch is really weird. Because they get more energy here, right? And the reason why... Like, it was a good catch. But I think the problem is... You have to throw two more moves, right? To take this out. Yeah, you're at one. But they get to two more foul plays before you, right? I think it was a good catch. But sometimes the catches are not necessary, right? Because I think now they just double up. Yeah, so... Or, well, yeah, they just double up. Yeah, because, they, because you caught two, they got even more Shadow Claw energy. I think at this point, when you see this Bastion, well, first of all, I would say swap the Registeel, right? But two, if you see this Bastion at this this stage and they're staying in to throw, they're going to chip you down with the move that probably does more damage whatever they have in the back, right? And Flamethrower should, I think, be doing be doing more damage. Yeah, it's roughly about the same as Foul Play. I think it's a little bit more than Foul Play. I would consider shielding that at that point. Um, yeah, because... They clearly want... They don't have a clear answer to your Registeel, right? Um, and so they, like... Could have been knocked out, could have been a bunch of things, but... Yeah, ends up being Sable Eye. Um, yeah, and again, the catch... It was okay. I think ideally you have enough health to get the zap, second Zap Cannon off, then come in Sable Eye, because your Sable Eye had some energy as well. Um, but yeah. Alright. Uh, I think first and foremost, so don't say, swap, say swap the Shadow Alone Nine Tails. I think that might have been just a misclick. All right, this, yeah, as you can see in all the other games, say swap the Registeel. Um, this is kind of awkward though, because Alone Sand Slash technically loses to uh, Lickitung. Okay, we got an early shield advantage, though. It's nice. Um, oh, they're running Power Punch. Okay, but again, they have to shield still. Uh, hopefully, get a debuff on this one. That would be nice. Yeah, really minimize the farm there. Good optimizing. Throw one lock on throw. Okay. No debuff again. So they're up by one power punch in damage. A good no shield though. I think the play here is you need to probably land a move. Oh, they swap in Lickitung. Oh, this is super awkward. I think, yeah, you have to bring in the Lone Sand Slash because that Medicham is going to be in the back still. And like just two or three counters is still going to put you down so low in health. They're pivoting though, so that might not be a good sign. Let's see what they have in the back, but anytime they pivot like this, it could be a little dicey. All right, here comes another move. You do have the shields. I like this. Get a lot of energy, so you have something to throw at the Medicham at least. Oh, well, actually, no, yeah. Okay, you throw the Ice Punch. This is fine. Um, the counter damage doesn't really even register. Okay, all right, good catch. Really good catch, probably Body Slam. Yeah. Uh, they're stuck here. With aggressive farm down, but I don't hate it. Ooh. Yeah, I'll probably just let this go. Oh my gosh. I like the no shield because no, not a lot of damage, but yeah, this is getting... Oh, okay. There actually is a chance. You need to get the shield down. It's good optimizing. I, I wonder if you go return. Because they're not going to shield. Yeah, I think you go return. Because return can force a shield. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not enough. All right, so let's let's look at how far away they were on return, right? So we throw the first foul play. One. Oh, yeah, no, they're just two, two Shadow Claws away. I think you, you definitely lift the 
uh, air slash enough to get to that next one, you need to grab their final shield so that you can get to this ice punch, right? I think that's a win con. Yeah. Because you need to grab that shield somehow, and the ice punch will one shot. Yeah. All good. All good. Um, I know the optimizing was there, but I think you just you don't even try to go for the optimization. You just go straight for the return there. All right. Uh, close battle, so for sure. I mean, that was a tough lead. Um, all right. Medicham lead. Fantastic lead. This is kind of an awkward matchup. Um, I do like to chip. Maybe chip and go Reggie Seal. Oh, they shield. Really? That's surprising. I, yeah, I like that no shield a lot. No shield. Go. Lola Sand Slash is okay. It's a little dicey, though. I think you still have to shield again, though. You don't want to have to shield, right? I think Red Seal makes a little more sense. But also, on top of that, the reason why this is kind of a dangerous swap is that the Medchamp gets a lot of energy here. Oh, and they catch on the Medchamp. Okay. Yeah, so Medchamp can pivot out, pivot into this easily. But you get rid of the Medchamp still. The problem is that Lantern is still kind of a problem, right? Okay. You can Shadow Claw down, though. Maybe you lock on down. I actually like that play a little bit more. You need energy on this ready seal somehow. Okay. No worries. Uh, I think you need to go. Okay. This is a knocked out. Yeah. Um, I personally would save the energy if possible on that save Y because, again, the Zapkin's pretty much going to one shot. Uh, it's not a bad shield. Shadow Ball does do quite a bit. I think Thunderbolt does a little bit more. Yeah, I think they shield this up, though. Okay, they do. They can just go foul. Focus Blast, yep. Yeah. Oh, the CMP is brutal, though. Oh, and it was a Thunderbolt, too. Um, It's kind of a dangerous undercharge. Do you get all of it? Okay. I probably under... What? Hold up. All right, I said this in one of my previous videos. I'm going to say it again. Why are people quitting here? The fa the the uh, dude, this is the easiest win comp for the opponent. I mean, I'm shocked that they quit this. Like, dude. All right, let's look at how much energy is on the save wire. This is my own soapbox here. You're you're not going to get. You're not at double foul play. You're not even at a single foul play. You could go return. You live a return from that range. You farm down. You throw one sky attack or shadow ball at the Reggie Seal. You win. Wait. It was. Yeah, it was the opponent that top left it. I would, I don't blame Brian if Brian chose top left there. What in the world? We do end at 2300 for uh, Brian. And uh, yeah, overall, great battles. I think um, the optimization, the counts were pretty good. Uh, I think the biggest thing is... Um, it seems like the biggest thing that tripped up Brian and a lot of these matchups were um, safe swaps, right? Opponent safe swaps. So something I do for my patrons whenever I come up with a uh, like a guide for them with any of my GBL teams is I have a lead guide. I essentially um, have like, all right, you let's say with this this team, right? Say bye, great. Um, what do you do if you go into match team? You stay in, right? What do you do if you as a registry that you uh, probably stay in for this team, right, etc. But I have another guide. Um, part of the, the second part of the guide is a is a counter swap guide, right? So what do you do when your opponent safe swaps a Galarian Stunfisk? What do you do when they safe swap a Lantern, right? Lantern, you might, I don't know, throw a foul play and then go Registeel. Or you go straight away to Alone Sand Slash because you win the ones and the twos, right? You just have to shield once, you know, and then you're good. I say this because I think uh, Brian could definitely benefit from having some type of lead guide. It doesn't have to be written out or anything, but just having a game plan for whatever happens, right? Lantern swaps, safe, safe swaps, you know exactly how to play it out. Glare and safe swap, you know exactly how to play it out, etc. Um, because GPL is just blind threes, you can only predict so much, but you could play out at least certain archetypes and certain safe swaps the same way. And then one one other thing is throwing moves that make sense, right? Or shielding moves that make sense, right? I think one example was, um, I think Brian threw a drill run at Azuma right away when at the end of the day, you know, the play rough ice beam was not going to be the thing that takes out the uh, alone sand slash. It was going to be the swamp or hydro cannon, right? So there's understanding situations where it makes sense to shield or makes sense to even throw damage, right? Whereas if you know a certain move is going to KO with one shot, there's no need to throw your energy, right? 
um but yeah overall though it looks like from a mechanical perspective it looked really good um and uh that's really good because sometimes that's very hard to teach people um so i think just having a plan for safe swaps and then uh figuring out situations where your shield slash when you throw damage uh when it's most meaningful is probably the best uh but again thank you to brian for showcasing the battles and sending them in it was definitely very fun to watch and see some of those plays um and yeah surprisingly no carping so um team was definitely prepared for carping but yeah unfortunately we didn't see any um anyway if anyone else wants to submit footage feel free to send me a dm on twitter at caleb Peng, uh with your footage 10 battles in a row could be in any league that's happening right now i know some people send me footage from like previous cups and i just haven't gotten to it yet because i have a lot in the queue but if you send me something from before and it looks like the rotation is almost over feel free to send 10 other battles instead because again i want this to be helpful for uh, everyone watching but especially the person submitting footage and if i'm just critiquing stuff like retro cup it might not be super helpful if we're not in retro cup for another year but um anyway thank you all for watching if you like this video feel free to give it a like and share subscribe for future content Hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video, and I'll catch you all next time.